Hello and welcome to another slideshow. As you see on my channel, there's been, uh, I think, two, two other slideshows, uh, 2018 and 2019. And here in October 2021, I find myself doing a slideshow for 2020. Uh, but it's been, it was a strange year last year, uh, admittedly, and I just never got around to, to doing a summary of the year. In April, uh, it was a very strange time indeed because we didn't actually get to uh, do an awful lot. The kids were at home all the time and uh, I didn't really get a lot done on Mega Breadvan when I could have really. Madam Mega Breadvan was at home working too, working from home. Uh, so April was very strange, as was uh, November. Last year uh, I didn't really do a lot of um, English lessons because I'm a, a sort of one-to-one -one English tutor to some very poor French uh, people who have to suffer trying to, to speak English. Uh, it's uh, just as hard for them as it is for speaking French. But uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't work a lot. By September I actually managed to get up uh, a good base of uh, students and it was quite disappointing to arrive in November and suddenly find that I had to go back to using the webcam again and basically half my students said no, we don't want to use a webcam. So yeah, very very strange year regarding uh, um, well, work, lessons, school and everything else. We did actually manage to get away on holiday uh, in the summer so that was pretty amazing uh, after being locked up for so many months um, earlier in the year it just seemed very strange to be out and going somewhere else and we spent uh, well uh, I think it was a week no two weeks sorry in um, Normandy not far well not far from um, Dieppe well to the west of Dieppe but a little bit inland uh, it's a bit cheaper so uh, I actually did a vehicle safari while I was up there I think it was my first proper one so if you look on my channel you'll you'll find that where I sort of took footage of various um, vehicles I came across and then we had an, a massive journey, an epic journey from um, Normandy right the way down to the Dordogne down to Brantom which is our uh, usual haunt so to speak and uh, we, we broke the journey in two, I think we stayed in Tour on our way down uh, so that was uh, quite a quite a long trip and I managed to see a few things, a few vehicles on the way so check that out on the channel. Uh, so yeah I managed to get away and uh, well apart from that uh, we managed to also, or I managed to also get some, some projects done on Mega Breadland finally. Uh, it's basically uh, a lot of investigation involved because uh, well I'm, I'm not the most many mechanical minded person um, you know, I'm completely hopeless to be honest but um, this this van has actually enabled me to learn quite a lot and um, I actually learned that there were a few things that needed attention well as it stood uh, it wasn't that bad uh, I mean I bought the van as seen uh, without any or very little um, work done on it really uh, from when the previous owner had it I agreed that because the prices are really silly uh, on these vans, believe it or not. Uh, perhaps not as silly as a 2CV or a Maori, but uh, even so, quite silly for something which is, in effect, a four-wheeled moped. Because it's a light vehicle, as I say, it's a quadricycle, uh, it's, or cyclomotor, whichever you want to, to call it in French, it's, it's important to keep an eye on things because it's quite... Uh, um, breakable we could say um, the chassis is uh, very light very thin and uh, so there was problems with rust uh, as you'll see in some of the photographs and in previous videos too if you have a look um, and so a certain amount of work had to be done in the main uh, things were damaged or uh, you know could end up damaged fairly quickly so uh, one of the the first job was was to look at the dash panel and look at a way of being able to take it off and put it back on easily and that's still something I'm trying to sort out now uh, a year later but it's uh, it's very thin plastic uh, the panel is and so it is easily damaged and so I've got to do a little bit of reparation or repair on that but removing the dash panel 
gave excellent access to everything, to the engine, to the chassis, the chassis, the subframe and so on. Uh, and that was the idea, because uh, with it in place, you've got very limited action, access to um, the you know, to everything really. And uh, when it came to, for example, uh, checking the dipstick, um, well, with the front dash panel on, it's you have to be a bit of a contortionist to get the damn thing out. So. Um, you know, it was something that uh, needed to be looked at, uh, and of course, taking that off uh, made me realise that, that um, work needed to be done on the on the subframe on the chassis, which is what I'm doing now, now at the moment in 2021. But um, the first job was really uh, tackling any rust, and that meant uh, repainting the the uh, sidebars, the metal sidebars, um, which not all uh, Mega Motor tru Trucks have, it's an optional extra I think, uh, but mine has them, thankfully, but they were a little bit rusty, or um, a little bit rusty when you looked at uh, the bars from the outside, but when you went underneath the van, you suddenly realised that there was more rust um, on that side, so so those needed tackling, uh, rust treating, uh, undercoats and hammerite on, on top and they came out quite well. Then uh, I noticed that you could buy a protection bar for the front and as I just mentioned the, the dash panel is quite fragile and uh, having a little bump into into something, uh, even if that's uh, I know a, a bollard or something like that when you're parking would mean um, a very damaged um, front panel. So anyway, um, I know you could buy these these front protection bars, which you could call what a rhubar or I don't know a nerf bar. So I ordered that before um, going on holiday, um, and of course it arrived while we were on holiday. Um, and thankfully, uh, a neighbour of ours, um, Celine, um, managed to. Um, received the delivery at her place, just up the road from us, and uh, when we came home, there it was, it was waiting for me at their place. Um, and um, thankfully my brother-in-law basically installed it for me, he put it on for me, but uh, there's another video uh, showing us doing that. It's quite, uh, I don't know, I suppose it was a little bit of a challenge because it was knowing how to do it, because it means taking the, the struts off of the subframe uh, to be able to fit the, the bar on the same bracket so the struts are fitted onto and of course you you sort of worry about uh, the fact that it's, um, you know, they're, they're under tension because you've got the suspension leg on one side of the strut and then you've got the two fixing points on uh, the other side onto the subframe via the brackets so that was, that was done and that uh, came out quite well um, and I decided to, 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 to make the van look a bit nicer by buying some new hubcaps because the ones that, uh, that Exam provide are plastic ones and they look horrible but uh, yeah I bought uh, some what are called half moon uh, hubcaps uh, influenced by uh, Jamie Van if you look on Instagram uh, you'll, you'll find him and also on YouTube he's got a channel so yeah um, he he'd fixed uh, these half moon hubcaps onto the vans that he'd had and I thought they look excellent, so I ordered uh, a set of those from uh, a place on um, on eBay, uh, a place based in the northeast of England, and uh, they were a sort of early Christmas present. Um, so to fit those, obviously I had to treat the uh, the wheels themselves, the, the actual um, metal hubs, and they were a little bit rusty, so. Um, I think I, I sort of cheated a little bit by uh, rust treating all the bits of rust and then just painting over the, the you know the, the rusty areas with uh, black hammerite because after I'd sprayed the, the rust treatment on all of the the parts of the um, the wheel that were uh, not rusty uh, suddenly looked very shiny and nice so. Uh, I sort of cheated a little bit and so the paint that was shiny, well not shiny and nice, but the paint that wasn't rusty is shiny and nice and then you've got patches where I've put hammerite but um, I don't suppose that you're going to see that and I think that it's probably protected well enough for now. Uh, we'll soon see when I remove the hubcaps one day 
um, and see if uh, there's any rust crept in there, uh, which I'll worry about that then. So yeah, thanks for um, watching, or thanks for when you will watch the summary of 2020. Uh, now we're in 2021, and um, it seems that um, the quality of my videos are improving very slowly as I learn how to edit and uh, how to present things. But um, I've decided this time, rather than just have music uh, in the background, because um, what is effectively a slideshow, which can be a little bit, um, I don't know, it depends on what you're interested in, but it can be a little bit boring, I suppose. Uh, I decided to do a voiceover on the photos as well. Uh, so, you know, um, hopefully that will work okay. And uh, we'll see how we go. So in February, I discovered how to charge the battery because it was quite weak. Um, I don't know where the battery actually came from, apart from the fact it said Citroen, uh, Peugeot Citroen on it, uh, which is probably not the appropriate battery for the, for the van, or it was just... Uh, one that the previous, uh, um, well, said so previous owner, probably dealer, because the dealer sold me the, the van, um, I had knocking around. So it was quite a weak battery and uh, I managed to buy a charger from Lidl. So uh, that was sort of sorted out, but it was just annoying because uh, when it was cold, in February, obviously it's cold, um, starting was a problem and uh, since then that's been sorted out. So we, we hit spring and uh, you can see uh, my van's looking a little bit dirty. Um, eventually I'd like to um, re-varnish the whole rear, rear part of the van uh, because it just seems that the, I don't know, it's, it's sort of fiberglass plastic mix, I think, um, or just fiberglass on it, so I'm not sure really but uh, it's become a little bit uh, rough and so when it rains the ridges, the, strength, the strengthening ridges on the top of the, the roof uh, tend to just basically pick up dirt and leaves and things and of course you get uh, all the muck dripping down the sides uh, so that's, that's going to be a, a one thing to, to tackle eventually. So we hit April and the confinement or lockdown, uh, as you want to call it. En français, uh, in French, it's uh, confinement. Um, so the kids were at home and it was pretty challenging really for them, especially. Um, although, the, the, you know, given their due, they managed to, to get on with their work. Uh, it's, just that, it's just that the fact they were at home and not at college or at school, in my daughter's case, um, there wasn't a lot of work to do but they kept themselves busy and my son has done this nice cartoon and um, my daughter was amusing herself really with various things some of these some of these things actually were school projects uh, I'm not sure um, why uh, she put uh, you know a, a, a stuffed dog a toy a stuffed dog <laughs> Um, uh, a stuffed toy uh, in uh, some soap suds but then she, she built a car out of a, a bottle so that was quite fun and my son had to do a perspective exercise so he borrowed a uh, PC plod and my bus and uh, a little figurine of uh, Wallace from Wallace and Gromit to, to illustrate that so here we have uh, our two vehicles our scenic our Grand Scenic and Mega Bread Van. In fact, we have a third vehicle, which you probably don't know about, which is a uh, Renault Kangoo. Uh, and that sort of lives at um, my father-in-law's house. So fast forward to the end of April, and after 38 days of self-isolating, because I have a health condition, which means I'm what considered as being at risk uh, to COVID, really. Um, I had to go and see the doctor anyway for a checkup. So, so on the 38th day, I went to go and see the, the, the GP and we had a little ride around. Um, you can see a video about that on, on my channel. So we're into May and I'm starting to think about doing some work. And the first job was taking the front panel off. Uh, it was the first time I'd done it. And um, those of you that don't know 
about uh, some Permi vehicles, um, a lot of the panels are glued together. Uh, so I don't know what all the manufacturers use, but in Aixam's case, they tend to use a pl uh, some, some plastic, um, I'm talking about plastic, the panels are plastic, but uh, the glue is sort of, a, um, I don't know, I describe it sort of a rubber type solution. And uh, it was a case of easing it off using a screwdriver with masking tape right around the end. Um, but it's not ideal, uh, but you know, it's, they're, they're built to be light, uh, not particularly strong, but they're built to be light. And uh, because of the engines they use, uh, in particular the, the Kubota in the AXAMs, well, it's an engine that vibrates a lot. And so of course, they, they have to cushion the vibration somehow on the panels. And so gluing them together seems to be the best way. But in my case, I wanted it so I could remove the front panel and put it back on again. And the hub nut sticker. Of course, you've got to have a Hubner sticker. So my, my van apparently originated with the garage du Deuxième, which is in Paris, the Deuxième arrondissement, which is uh, part of, uh, if you know, know in, in Paris, that each uh, uh, quarter, whatever you call it, is, is divided up. Uh, I'm not sure how many there are, but they're called arrondissement. Um, and they, they form sort of like, if you look at a map of Paris, they're like um, uh, the shell on a snail, appropriately. So they start in the centre and they go out in a spiral to round the edge. So the Deuxième is sort of uh, south east uh, of uh, Paris. Uh, and as we, if we travel in from where we are, because we're sort of on the outskirts of the Paris suburbs, um, we end up in the 13th, so it's sort of not too far away. But this guy doesn't exist anymore, I don't think. Uh, they did have a website with a lot of interesting uh, technical manuals, but uh, it seems it's offline now. So another jaunt out and we went shopping. So uh, first shopping trip after the confinement. So that was kind of fun. Um, a bit apprehensive really, because obviously uh, we hadn't been out uh, much or rather uh, Madame Bregvan has continued to work uh, from I think it was um, beginning of July, I think. Or was it beginning of June? I can't remember. I think it's probably the beginning of June. Uh, she'd been working from home. So she'd been out and I hadn't. So I managed to get to go on holiday um, and we headed to, to well, near the Normandy coast. Uh, we rented a Jeet, uh, which is a small, well, it can be a small bungalow, an apartment or whatever. It's a holiday home, basically, uh, which, um, you know, it was sort of, well, the, the place we went was like a bungalow, but it was next to a Maison d'Hôte, so a sort of small hotel, I suppose. Um, small b, &B. apparently the, the owner had, had had it built in uh, Poland, um, I think. Uh, it was sort of a wooden structure that was kit built, but it looked really impressive. It's quite a big house, really, uh, for a, a kit built place. And I think he had about three bedrooms or three three um, apartments in, in, inside. We, we rented the bungalow, it was in the same grounds. So yeah, it was quite nice. Um, my son uh, seemed to have fun with an app on his phone. I'm not sure what app it was, but uh, it made him laugh anyway. So coming back, it was uh, mid-August, um, I think, and um, it sort of coincided with the launch of the new Citroen Ami, uh, the little electric Sompermi car that they brought out, made in Morocco. It seemed to be popular when it was released. Uh, it seemed to create a a bit of a, a stir, but uh, I'm not sure they've, they've sold particularly well. Madame Megan Bradvan saw this one in FNAC and took a picture of it for me. So it was basically, or still is, I think, uh, for sale in a, it's um, a shop that sells sort of multimedia type things. DVDs perhaps, books, um, tickets for concerts, um, sort of electrical gadgets and things. Uh, they sell all sorts of bits and pieces and they now sell these Citroen Ami. So the front end was off by the time we came back from, from holiday and um, I'd ordered the, the protection bar which you can see on the right of the photograph. Um, I think it was before we went on holiday and our friends uh, Cile uh, Celine and uh, Seb who live down the road were kind enough to receive it for me because obviously we weren't here. So 
they mostly receive a massive box um, with the, the protection bar in and um, that waited me when we got back home. And another thing that awaited me when I got back home was an order from Hubnuts. So we're sort of fast forwarding a bit because uh, I didn't fit the protection bar straight away, or rather my brother-in-law didn't fit it for me straight away. Uh, he, he kindly uh, gave me a hand with it. But uh, by September, I was starting to get back to giving English lessons again. But it's been quite, it was quite a challenge at the time because I had to put in place all of the security measures and so on, as we call them. So hand gel, dispenser, visors and so on, which uh, actually was quite costly. I suppose but uh, yeah everything was put in place for the lessons and I managed to to, to give face-to-face -face lessons for a couple of months so while this was going on I was investigating where do I need to put the protection bar what does it fit onto so I offered it up to the, the subframe as you can see the subframe is, is in quite a bit of a state it's, it, there's bits of rust on there in fact, um, I realised now that it was rusty and I thought it was. And the, uh, to the top of the pictures, you can see the um, um, sort of insulating uh, panels, noise insulation that is, and they were in a bit of a state. Uh, and I've since bought new ones. And this year, as I speak, I've yet to fit them. But uh, that's one of the next jobs to do. But going back to 2020, uh, I sort of worked out that uh, it needed to go on the rear part of the the brackets holding the the struts. So with my son, we managed to work out how to uh, refit the front panel, and I put some holes in the side to fix it. I was trying to think of a way of how, how am I going to fix this, you know? So I used bodywork bolts with a spring-loaded um, nut on the back, but I've since found that this has split the panel in places, so I've got to think again about this. So the inside uh, hasn't had any attention. It didn't have any attention in 2020 and it hasn't had much attention in 2021. The idea is just to, uh, there's, a, there's a crack in the floor that needs, needs uh, some attention, uh, but mainly it's, it's going to be sort of cosmetic where I need to add flooring and insulation and I've got a, a cordless speaker and things like that. So there's, there's things afoot, but I've just not got around to them. With the front panel on, the access to the, the engine isn't brilliant. Um, trying to, to get to the dipstick, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is a pain. Um, and ideally, it just you just need to have, have that possibility of being able to take the panel off. The insulation on the right-hand side isn't in a good state, really, which is why I ended up replacing it. But uh, that was causing the rust in the main because when it got wet, um, with it uh, being attached to the subframe uh, at the bottom uh, of the engine compartment, um, that caused the rust. It caused the rust around the, uh, the nuts attaching it and also um, basically underneath the, the frame. After a bit of a search, I managed to find the fuse box. Uh, it's not really a box, it's just basically the set of plugs where you put the fuses. And it's just stuffed under the dashboard inside the, the cab. Um, and that's it. To, to see what's on the actual fuse board, uh, I think you'd call it a board, wouldn't you, uh, more than anything. To see what's actually on the fuse board, you have to lie on the, on the floor of the cab and look up to see what's on it. So I'm going to try to rectify that at some point as well. But for now, I'm trying to, uh, with the help of my brother, in law I've been trying to work out what each fuse does and um, we've sort of worked it out more or less but I need to sit down with a piece of paper and, and do a little diagram of some sort and that's something that will be uh, the subject of a future video in 2021. So I finally got around to fitting the the front protection bar or rather my brother-in-law got around to fitting it for me um, so you know I was quite quite pleased with that um, it did a really good job um, some welding had to be done because uh, the the brackets are quite weak um, but if you look at my channel there's a video covering the whole process of uh, fitting the these bars uh, obviously we had to take the wheel off and you can see the um, the rust that we found uh, which uh, wasn't particularly brilliant um, and in fact some of the rust that I found I were later treated it in 2021 so I'm going a bit ahead of ourselves here. Um, so it was treated and painted, but I missed the bits underneath the headlamps, which I'd found in 2020, and I completely missed them. So yeah, uh, it looked quite good with the, the front uh, bar on, but then I realized putting the front dash panel on was a bit of an issue. So we took it for a test drive just to check everything was okay, and the front uh, protection bar didn't fall off. 
Um, although I did sort of ground a little bit when I was at my other brother-in-law's house because he has uh, his garage under his house and to get to it he has a ramp. And when I was coming up the ramp I heard a <coughs> noise and realised that uh, I'd taken the ramp a bit too quickly and the bottom of the protection bar rubbed on the concrete of his ramp. But I didn't cause any damage so that was the main thing. So the next project was uh, painting the protection bars along the side and at the back because they really needed attention. Uh, there was quite a bit of rust uh, around the joints where they slide into the into the chassis underneath the cab. Um, but the, the issue was most of the rust was actually hidden. Uh, it was underneath the bars but also um, uh, behind them and at the ends particularly where obviously water's thrown up by the wheels, uh, causing causing the, the bars to rust. So first of all, I added uh, rust treatment. Uh, it was a rust converter bought from a shop called Carter Cash, which is a sort of motoring chain in France. They tend to sell a lot of products from Germany for some reason, but they're very good quality and quite cheap, not expensive really. So all my undercoat and the rust converter came from there. Um, I used red, uh, um, undercoat. I wasn't bothered about the colour because I was going to paint black on top anyway or rather grey as I later found out. Um, so I treated all the bits that were rusty and the rest I left. And as you can see the result was, was not too bad in this overexposed photograph. Um, yeah, I was quite pleased actually because when I brush painted the Hammerite on I did about, uh, I think I did two coats in the end. Uh, it means that I didn't need to buy new protection bars, which are quite expensive, I think. I'm not sure how, how much they are. I'll put that on screen if I find out how much, but you know, it was a hell of a lot cheaper painting painting them in the end, and they look like new. Rather, the back one looks a little less like new because it was damaged, but uh, I had to repair the left-hand part of it because uh, the, the cap over the end had gone missing, and it was rusting inside the bar. So I had to treat the rust, uh, well, just where I could reach, basically inside and then I used uh, the cap from a Nutella jar to repair the, the end. And the next job was to sort out the wheels because I wanted to buy some hub caps to, to look better than the, the plasticky ones supplied by Aixam. Um, and to do that uh, I added rust converter onto the hub caps and um, realised it made them look nice and shiny but there's still there's still bits of rust particularly on the inside of the rim. Um, I mean Cosmetically, it was just a bit of a slapdash job. Uh, on the inside of the wheel, on the inner side of the, the wheel hub, it is quite rusty. Um, and it's something I'm going to have to sort out at some point, but I, didn't, I just don't see it as being a priority at the moment. They're not likely to, to fall apart or anything. It's just surface rust. But uh, on the outside, I wanted them to be at least be protected from the elements, even if I was going to put hub caps on. So the hub caps arrived. Uh, from uh, a seller on eBay uh, who specialises in these half moon hubcaps. I was quite pleased with them. And they're not too expensive. I think uh, I paid is it approaching, I can't remember. Again, I'll have to see, see what the price was and look, at, look it up. So I took a few shots of um, hubcaps on Mega Bread Van and it actually, actually looks a lot better, you know, just a small touch. Can, can make things look a hell of a lot better. And so that was that was the first run out um, with the hubcaps on. Uh, went to the to the Marais and we're in December. So you can see that uh, yeah, the ground's quite frozen and we're already into into the colder months. And unfortunately, Mega Breadvan's heater is practically non-existent. So driving about means having to put a coat, scarf and wrap myself up sort of thing. I uh, hope, hope to, another future project, I hope to, to sort out the heater. And the photograph of me in the hubcaps is the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll say it again. I said it earlier in the video. Uh, that was me clapping my hands. I hope you enjoyed the little rundown of 2020. I've already started putting photographs together for 2021. And uh, well, here's to another video. C'est le plus beau pays de France Avec un peu d'humilité C'est la région de mon enfance Ce sont mes parents, mes amis Oh, les salles, les salles, les salles, mon camarade